Hello there and welcome to another Cigar Advisor Cigar Review Panel Cigar Review. I'm Gary Korb, Executive Editor for CigarAdvisor.com and today we're going to be reviewing the new Billiger Exclusivo USA Robusto and I, I think uh, it's one of the more interesting blends that they have uh, released and you'll never guess who blended it unless you already know. Uh, and now let's meet our lovely panelists. He'll smoke a torpedo, but never in a speedo. It's Jared Gulick. Oh, thank God. Copywriter, Cigar <laughs> Advisor. And he put the us in Robusto. It's Cigar Advisor Managing Editor, John Pulo. <laughs> so anyway, here we are with the Villager Exclusivo USA Robusto. Uh, this is exclusive to Famous Smoke Shop. That's one of the reasons maybe they called it exclusive. Oh, I don't know. But anyway, um, this cigar is a 5x52 box press. The wrapper is Ecuador Sumatra. The binder is Nicaraguan. The filler is Nicaraguan and Dominican. It is rolled only in this one size for now, the Robusto, and it is presented in boxes of 20 cigars and singles with a SRP at a pretty well under $10, $8. So that's pretty good. And um, a box is 160 and if you shop at Famous uh, quickly, <laughs> you'll get it for 96.99. But uh, anyway, so not a bad deal. And uh, I'm going to just give you a little bit of background on the uh, cigar here. It was, uh, ex this Villager Exclusivo USA was originally made for the 2020 Tobacconist Association of America show, which was held uh, last March. And it was simply called the Villager TAA Exclusive and it was presented in a six by 54 Toro. It was not a Robusto. And uh, it, this was a first for the uh, brand because Heinrich Villiger asked Ernesto Perez Carillo <laughs> to make his cigar at the famous Tabacalera La Alianza in the Dominican Republic. And somewhere along the line, uh, the famous buying office got into some kind of negotiation, I guess. And uh, now this blend is made in the Robusto and sold exclusively, as I said, uh, under the Villager Exclusivo USA uh, name. And I think it's quite appropriate, right? So because it is limited production, uh, it's only sold in boxes of 20 cigars and singles. There's no five packs. And um, I, I, you know, this, the fact that this is a Villager Perez Carrillo creation, I think is recent enough to want to try the cigar. And uh, let's see if our opinions have anything else to do with that. So Jared, uh, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about the construction and the pre-light flavor and all that nice stuff. Yeah, I, I'm really impressed. Uh, what I like is it has this aged leather look to it, right? It's got this like just kind of vintage look to it. And for me, the, the pre-light, which we're a, a bit past now, was a little almost like wheat bread, like wheat bread and earth. Like that's what I got. Usually I get fruit off of a cigar, but this one just kind of had that wheat bread flavor to it. And then once I lit it up, Got a little little shot of pepper, but not too much. And I've noticed that the smoke, uh, like mouthfeel wise, is just very. It's it's hard to describe other than clean. It's just got a very clean sensation. Like it just doesn't feel like there's, you know, it doesn't. It almost doesn't feel like smoke. It's just like a clean, almost like a refined type of um, mouthfeel. I like it. Okay, John, how about you? I think I found uh, some of the same things that Jared found. Maybe a little bit more spice, but definitely the earth that he was talking about in the air. I sensed some of these things a little bit more like, hey, uh, but, you know, when it came to the construction and the appearance, especially what I thought was interesting is you have this kind of a soft box press. Right. Uh, but when you when the, when the light catches it the right way, it, there's a rosado look to this wrapper a little bit when the light hits it. And it's and it's really appealing. It's an appealing look. And, you know, even if it's even though it's a box press. You know, it doesn't feel like a like a hardcore box press. It's, it's a soft press. So I think even if you're like, eh, you know what, box press isn't for me. I, I, this one is rounded enough that you can look past that. Yeah, I um, I was impressed with that too. In fact, you know what it reminded me of? Because it's a Robusto and that reddish hue uh, that it has on it, the patina, whatever. It, it, uh, it reminded me of the, the, the first Hunch Rare Corojos, the color of those. Now that was a Corojo wrapper, but um I also it was also ecuador i think so um that was interesting but yeah it kind of reminded me of that and look look at the bird it's, it's really off to a nice start here uh it's really great 
John, did anything change for you uh, in the first act, or did you pick up anything unusual? Or, well, you know, good, I, I, I know sometimes we talk about these things as breaking them up into acts, but this mm -hmm. this seemed to be more of a first and second half. Okay. So, um, you know, since we're only, you know, this far in, I'll only really talk about the first half. And it's kind of a little bit toasty. Uh, you know, well, actually, I'm getting ahead of myself. So the first few puffs of this thing is really a, an in-your-face kind of opening. It's charred wood, think like campfire, yes. uh, earthy, almost a mineral kind of taste to it. Mm -hmm. And then, and, you know, and I was like, I, I don't, I'm not sold on the way the cigar is tasting in the first, you know, few drags off of it. But th it was a very misleading kind of opening because it, it settles in and comes around really nicely that it gets a little bit toasty. And there's this soft, subtle sweetness that lingers in the background. It's dry. And, and then it, it just becomes, for the first full half of the cigar, it just keeps building and building and building a little more sweet, a little more yeah. sweet, like cocoa. It's a little more sweet, in, in, but it's dry and it's subtle. But it's, yeah. I'm just going to, I'm just going to stop showing up to these things because, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you just, like my entire review is over. <laughs> like you, you nailed it. I, like I have never been, I think probably... You know, we sometimes we have stuff in common. Sometimes we deviate. I think this is the, maybe the first time that you've ever done point for point everything that I found. Like I well, found it to be. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, with that with that opening, I mean, did you find that it was just like oof, that's? I don't know if I'm because I seriously, I, I I lit this thing up and I'm like, I don't know if I'm gonna like this. Yeah. And when you were talking about the second half, I mean, we're getting a little ahead of ourselves, but the second half opening up and just being much better than the first. I, I agree with that. I think this is very much a second act cigar. Uh, and, uh, but when you said, when you started talking about, uh, you know, charred wood, I got kind of like a charred toast flavor with, with dark wood. I'm like, this is, okay. we're, we're right on point. So. All right. So we're seeing the consistency then as far as, yeah. as far as some of those early. Flavors. Yeah, definitely. So, I, mean, I definitely um, got a lot of the same stuff. I definitely got yeah. that, uh, you know, char, charry wood flavor, uh, kind of a mineral flavor. Um, the uh, I guess low me now. Now my sample was it, it drew a lot more easily than this. It was, this was a, kind of a loose straw, and I think that also affected it too. Now this straw is really good, but I'm definitely getting more flavor from the cigar in terms of you know the flavors are are easier to identify in this one. I'm, I'm definitely tasting more of the wood flavor, more of the. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, but also mine was also more peppery. Do you guys get some black, like black pepper out of this? I do. Yeah. Not Barry, a I, lot. Not a lot. Uh, I wouldn't say this was uh, heavy on the pepper. I'm not really getting it here. I didn't get it on my first sample uh, that I smoked last week. Uh, you can dial it up quite a bit in the retro hail, but I like for just a standard typical draw, which most people are going to do, I'm not getting, let's put it this way. Since Ernesto blended this, it's not, it's not typical of his, of his cigars where they're fuller body, you know? Ah, you know, that's interesting. John, did you want to say something? Well, I was going to say, I, I tended to find more of the pepper and I'm still finding more of the pepper on this one too. Um, mm. It's more in on the finish. I know you guys said it had a, sh a shorter finish, but for me, it kind of lingered a lot longer. Uh, and Jared, uh, has stolen it back from me because yes, it's in the, it's in the, it's in the retro hail. Yeah. Um, it's, it's kind of like this real snappy, crisp spice, but it's also kind of a floral kind of sensation in the, in the retro, which is mm. different. Mm. Haven't That's sensed that in retro hail in a long time. Yeah. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about our friend Ernesto Perez Grillo because he's had a hell of a year last year. Uh, not only did he have the number one cigar of the year with the pledge, but uh, he blended the number seven cigar of the year, the gatekeeper for Alec and, and Bradley cigars. And he he did this cigar. Um, I mean, you know, what was the TIA? But it's the same, same cigar, basically, same blend, just different size. Um, so if I told you, well, I guess Jared kind of, made the point but if i told you that ernesto perez grillo made the cigar i said who do you think made the cigar do you think you would have guessed it Be like if i didn't know yeah for him probably yeah. not I, I wouldn't i wouldn't have guessed just in, just because of what i was saying it's not 
See, the thing is about Ernesto, Ernesto is kind of typecasted and you kind of touched upon it with like the last couple of years, three out of the, or yeah, two out of the last three years, he's had the number one cigar, but he's a little typecasted and where if you like go with his greatest hits, like if you look at like Encore or Pledge or even stuff like Inch, very, very peppery. But if you go deeper into his profile uh, and look at stuff like Core Plus Maduro, if you look at like New Wave, there's a lot of medium bodied cigars that are in there. So I wouldn't have necessarily pegged him to have blended this, but it's not, it's certainly not outside of his purview. Okay. All right, because if I said to you that the, uh, it has an Ecuador Sumatra wrapper and a Nicaragua Dominican filler, <laughs> would that have helped? Well, the Sumatra would, you know, see, he, Ernesto's been using Sumatra since yeah, he loves forever it. and a day ago. He loves it. It's, it's, it's his favorite thing to blend with. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not good enough, uh, to pick EPC cigars out of a lineup, but you know, uh, so I, I wouldn't have known it either unless you went ahead and told me. Um, but you know, I, and I think, you know, even though he blended the cigar, he's got to share some credit, uh, the credit that he gets for this with Villiger a little bit too, Absolutely. because was, they, they ordered it up in some capacity and said, Ernesto, please make you yeah. know, I mean, they have their own blending folks. They, you know, they're obviously perfectly capable of making some really great premiums, but they mm -hmm. turned to him for a reason. But I think he still had to make a Villager cigar as opposed to an EPC cigar. You know, so do you say that they, you know, turn to him for that reason explicitly, that they want something of theirs that tastes like his? Or, you know, and that's to your point, you, you know, is, is it, were they looking for something that tasted more like a cigar that would come from the Alianza? So, you know, either way, I mean, the man's on a roll. It's the yeah. EPC renaissance over the past three years. <laughs> right. You know, all of his work with other people, the number ones, his own award-winning stuff. I mean, it's hard to argue that the guy's, you know, it, I mean, talk about, you know, coming of age, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well they, I'm, I'm they were happy mentioned... when they ordered it. Now they're really happy. <laughs> yeah. you know, so well, I'll tell you, really I'm glad happy. you mentioned uh, the Villager aspect because Heinrich uh, Villager is no slouch. I mean, you know. Uh, no. He certainly had some input on this cigar, and and sure. I don't know if I would have guessed it, especially on, uh, uh, you know, first go round because uh, it, it didn't. I don't know. I, I I think Ernie's stuff has a kind of a certain character to it, but definitely uh, you can't uh, count out uh, Heinrich on this one because they obviously work together. So you you know when you can tell that this is, and or at least you can't really tell, but at least you could say that if somebody told you. Ernesto Perez Carrillo made this cigar mm -hmm. for Villiger. It's in the second half that you would say, mm, I can see that. All I right. Could definitely see that. Interesting. Because as, as we're getting to this, you know, this into, you know, you'll call it act two, I'll call it about, you know, the midway point, some of that yeah. sweetness that we've talked about. I, you know, we've, in our various reviews, we've talked about a citrusy, kind of an mm -hmm. earthy component. There's a sweetness. I described it as kind of like a, a dry. Uh, a dry, spicy sweetness like cocoa or you know, kind of toastiness, but it's right here where it starts to get a little in interesting. Where I think you know where he wanted to go with the blend and say, "Watch this," <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because it's just like all of a sudden, here comes some darker flavors. Yes, here and is that's cedar. What here is, and it's like real smoky. It's really charred and like heavy on the earth. And I'm starting to find some crazy stuff in there too, like fennel <laughs> and tannins. And it's just like, you know, eye-openingly eye complex for the second half. And it's just like, you know what it almost is? What? Siri. It's, it's, it's Siri R. Ooh. Whoa. Okay, you're kind, of, you're kind of blowing my mind right now, actually. Well, Jared, it's, I was going to ask you. It's uh, Siri R-ish. It's like all of a sudden it comes out of nowhere. It's just like, check this out. Remember Siri R? She's like, here it is. So, Jared, I was going to ask you, since John brought it up, you know, what, what are you getting in the middle section? Anything so, different? Uh, well, it's not, it's in the ballpark for him. Uh, but mine, so I'm getting sweetness. Um, but for once, the sweetness is like almost direct sugar. Like I just taste like this like little bit of sugar in there. Uh, and I have a little bit of like a little bit of salt mixed in with that too. So it's got this like nice savoriness and uh, sweetness to it. But then there's also this leafy greens and metallic flavor. I can't really put my finger on it. It's like kind of like an alkaline metallic 
That's the best way I could put it. But it's not off-putting. Like you might, th- you know, think that it's metallic. It's just kind of like I want to keep tasting that. Like I want to keep tasting that. It's just an interesting note that you don't get too often. But it's it's really good. Like I said, this this cigar is definitely wakes you up in the second half, and it wakes up in the second half too. You know? Yeah. Well, I'm not finding it half as peppery as my sample, so I'm I'm also gonna I'm a, probably gonna have to balance the two or throw that one out because this is a <laughs> totally different animal. Smoke, um, smoke another one. <laughs> yeah, but I got two more. Is, over here. Um, Come on. I, I am I am picking up definitely um, more of like uh, at this stage, more of like an espresso note. So I'm getting like this, got this earthy, like loamy thing going on. You have like this black pepper and then mineral kind of thing, maybe a tart fruit thing. Yeah. I think it's kind of complex, to be quite honest with you. It's, isn't it interesting? You know, we get into this halfway point and all of a sudden, you know, we're all kind of going along and then it's like whew, everybody mm-hmm. goes in a totally different direction as far as some of the stuff makes sense. Yeah. So, you know, I hadn't, I hadn't picked out coffee and I'm not necessarily thinking espresso, you know, in particular, I'm mm-hmm. still thinking a lot more of that. Oak, I'm thinking more oakiness now. Mm-hmm. Um, earth, most definitely. There's even a little bit of cinnamon yeah. red hots that's lingering on yeah. the tongue. Maybe, you know, and so, so I'm going this way, you're going this way, Jared's, <laughs> you know, heading that way, yeah. you know, so it's complex is the word, especially yeah. the second half. But on top of that, it's very well balanced. It's very well balanced. Like there's nothing that's like screaming and trying to take control of the flavor profile here. Like all the flavors that I was talking about, all of them have their slot and they're staying in it, but it's not, you know, uh, it, it's still very complex without just, you know, shouting, I would say. Okay, well, anyway, I wanted to talk a little bit about the burn and the ash. Uh, I had a really good ash going, it fell off, but look, there's, I'm still getting a nice tone there and uh, the ash is nice and firm and it holds up well. I think that's important. So, you know, I mean, I don't think, you know, when you have a cigar, you know, that's made at La Alianza, you know, probably expect some pretty good construction overall but i found that uh, both samples were uh, particularly very good in terms of the burn and uh, the overall construction and the ash too so what i want to ask you john is uh where do you see the flavor profile medium medium plus um you know the first it, it's it's something that i think ups in intensity from the beginning it starts off probably mellow plus maybe just barely a medium, but you know, as the further you go on, and especially once you hit that big transition point in the halfway, that's when things start to tip in here. So, you know, I, I would I would actually call this cigar a two drink cigar. Okay. So the first half, you know, have something that's kind of mellow with it. Second half, don't be afraid to order, you know, something maybe a little more stiff to go along with some of the flavors that are starting to come out of it, you know, and it's, it's burning long enough uh, you know, this, the airflow is, is good to your point about construction. Uh, you know, I don't find the draw too loose. Um, so it, it will last long enough for you to probably enjoy two drinks with. As far as a drink, you know, pairing would go. I, I kind of agree with Jared that, you know, the, uh, there is a little sweetness in there. It's, it's hiding in there in the bottom. And I think what would bring it out a little bit would be uh, Zaya. I would go with the Zaya rum. I think it has a nice sweetness to it. And I think it would go well with all the other little flavors. What about you, John? Uh, you brought it up. <laughs> well, well, I'm certainly no uh, rum rum aficionado. Well, it's a two drink cigar, so you we know, have the rum at the beginning, cig- and uh... <laughs> um, well, yeah, <laughs> I don't okay. know. If you, if, yeah, right. If you want to go that that way, um, <laughs> I, I so I might start off with something like an old fashioned. Oh, but okay. Then the second drink, yeah. but then but then the second, half, the second half, the second half. Uh, leave leave out the leave out the extras and just go straight for the whiskey. Okay, that would right. be fun. But I was looking for something that might make it a little sweeter because that's just what I like. Um, well, yeah, yeah. I, I think if you if you want to make it a little sweeter, I, I mean, I'll tell you what. Um, put a little extra sugar or cream in your coffee, and it'll go great. Okay, uh, that's good with the coffee too. Jared, who's the cigar for? So. I liked what you said, Pulo, about it being kind of like a mellow plus up front and then building. I think it averages, though, if we're honest with ourselves, as a solid medium body. Like 
the average throughout the entire length, right? So I think this is a really good cigar for like, especially, you know, if at your, your local shop, you're having a hard time finding, you, you want to try out Ernesto's blends, but you know, he's, the, he's, he's so in high in demand right now that you might not be able to get, especially like the cigar of the year from him. And plus it's, it's very, so it's, it's, it's price conscious for one, two is it's very accessible uh, because it's got uh, a decent amount of flavor uh, and it gets very complex for the second, like we talked about, but uh, it's not heavy. It's not heavy at all. So uh, vets will love it. New, new smokers are, are going to be okay with it as long as they have it after dinner. So I, I think it's really kind of a, an everybody cigar, both in terms of price and in terms of strength and body. Okay. All right. Well, I think we all pretty much agree on a lot of uh, the cigar has to offer. How about uh, some final thoughts from you, Mr. Pulo? Well, I would say that, like I, uh, I'll repeat what I said before. This is a, a two-drink cigar. Part one is this is this slow, sweet bloomer. Uh, part two is uh, all about let's get interesting. And uh, you know, like I said before, it feels barely box pressed, so I think it'll be okay with the shape. Uh, you know, the most interesting thing is stick around for the second half when it takes the flavor wheel for a spin. And, uh, you know, to Gary's point, you, you can kind of feel like you get a maybe a little bit of exposure to EPC. And I still think, I still think there's a little bit of callback to Siri R here. Just, it just, it's me that way. All right. All right. Well, I think this cigar would be great for someone who really likes, uh, you know, a spicy cigar, full flavored cigar. Uh, that's sort of on the dark, earthier side. Uh, I, I think, you know, burns well, smokes well. Um, it has a great draw, and um, I, I, I think that, um, I, I'm, I don't know, but I think there's a, a little medio tiempo in here. Definitely some Lajero, but he may have, you know, spiked it a little bit with that. And um, I'll stick to the saying that I, I, I actually, I think this cigar actually could use a little more time. I think it will be even better in three to six months. It just... Got that vibe out of it. How about you, Jared? Take us home. Um, so yeah, you know, I'll, I'll regurgitate my points uh, like Pulo did. I think it's uh, again solid medium body, very price conscious, um, and if it's it's not like I said, I, I don't want people to think that it's boring in the first act. But if no, you're not, not if you're not in if you're not into like all in on the first half of the cigar, just wait because it's going to totally be worth it by the time you hit the middle. So great price, great flavor. It's no brainer for me. So that wraps it up for the Billiger Exocebo USA. And it is the Robusto. It is the only size that is available at famous-smoke.com. And remember for more cigar reviews, advice, and news, follow us at cigaradvisor.com and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And of course on our YouTube channel, you can subscribe and you can like this video. Thank you very much. And of course, we'd like you to hit the bell for those notifications. You will know when our next video is uploaded. So that's it. I want to thank John and Jared always for their opinions. Very important. And uh, I'm Gary Korb, and we'll see you on the next Cigar Advisor Review Panel, Cigar Review. <laughs>